For a long time, I called myself a utilitarian. Then a couple of people convinced me that I was using the term utilitarian incorrectly. I was not, in fact, a utilitarian. There are certain features essential to utilitarianism that I reject. So what is it about utilitarianism that I find problematic? Utilitarianism holds that the universe contains this thing called utility, having objective intrinsic prescriptivity. This utility is found in pleasure or happiness or some similar state of the universe, typically involving some brain state of some certain type of creature. The ultimate end of human action is to fill the universe with as much of this utility as one can. The more utility there is, the better the world is. Whatever this utility is supposed to be, I don't think it exists. No utility has ever been created. Now, of course, I can't deny that we create happiness or pleasure and the like, and I'm certainly not going to deny that they're good. I deny that the type of entity that this term utility refers to, which is supposed to be a part of happiness and pleasure, and that which makes it good doesn't exist. Now, I owe an argument to show that these intrinsically valuable utilities don't exist. For that, I'll refer the reader to the writings of J.L. Mackey, which I've commented on in other videos. In contrast to this utilitarian thesis that there are these intrinsically valuable entities called utility, I hold that value is a relational property. One of the elements of this relationship is a desire that P, such as a desire that I'm not in pain. What these desires are being related to are states of affairs in which this proposition P can be true or false. If one has a desire that P, then the agent prefers a state of affairs in which P is true over one in which P is false. A person with a desire that I am not in pain prefers a state of affairs in which I am not in pain is true over one in which I am not in pain is false. Now, there are a lot of different ways in which desires can relate to states of affairs. I'd argue that moral value relates in action to desires that people generally have reasons to cause everybody to have by the use of praise and condemnation. The wrongness of drunk driving consists in the fact that people generally have reasons to promote an aversion to drunk driving in everybody by the use of praise and condemnation. To illustrate the difference between intrinsic utility and relational value theory, I want you to imagine the following case. Imagine that we have an individual that I will call ALF. Now, I'd love to draw an animation here, but I'm afraid that I have no skills in that area. ALF has two desires. ALF has a strong desire that some type of flower be preserved, that it not go extinct. This flower, let us assume, is about to go extinct. Alf also has a weak desire to continue to exist. So now Alf stands next to a button. If Alf pushes the button, the flower will be preserved, but Alf will die. Of course, if Alf doesn't press the button, then the flower will go extinct, but Alf will live on. Should Alf press the button? Utilitarian theory would prohibit Alf from pressing the button. Why? If ALF presses the button, then ALF will create a universe without a single one of these intrinsically valuable utilities in it. The existence of a utility requires the existence of an entity experiencing pleasure or happiness, or at least with a desire to be fulfilled. A relational theory, in contrast, takes the strong desire that the flower not go extinct to provide ALF with a strong reason to press the button. And the weak desire to continue to exist provides Alf with a weak reason not to press the button. The strong reason to press the button outweighs the weak reason not to, so all things considered, Alf should press the button. This is what Alf has the most and strongest reason to do. Now, we might look on this case and feel that it would be wrong or bad or something for Alf to push the button and create a universe in which no conscious creatures exist. We might prefer the world in which Alf continues to exist without the flower over the world in which the flower exists without Alf. 
But it would be a mistake to infer from this that ALF's existence has some type of intrinsic value. We're simply evaluating how the two options stand in relation to our own preferences rather than ALF's preferences. But we don't exist in ALF's universe. Our preferences aren't relevant. So then what can we say about moral value? To see the implications on moral value, imagine the following. Imagine a community of, let us say, 1,000 beings, each having only one desire. That desire is an aversion to their own personal pain. All of them hate to experience pain. There is also a type of action, act type A, such that those who do A can avoid a little pain for themselves, but cause a lot of pain for others. It's also possible for the people living in this community to create an aversion to performing acts of type A by condemning those who do so and praising those who refrain from doing acts of type A. So now, where these three assumptions are true, every individual has a reason to condemn anybody who performs an act of type A and to praise those who refrain. If we were to use the term wrong to refer to acts of a type that everybody has a reason to condemn, we would have a concept of wrong that is quite similar to our own use of that term. It would refer to such things as breaking promises or a failure to repay debt, a failure to help those in need. It would refer to people who perform theft or violent assault or murder or rape. These are all types of actions that everybody has a reason to promote in others and aversion to performing by praise and condemnation. And there is no mention of intrinsically prescriptive utility in any of this account. We can see on this account how two conceptions of value provide different answers to the question of whether ELF should press the button. Under the utilitarian conception, ELF doesn't press the button since pressing the button will create a universe in which there are no creatures capable of valuing and thus there's no utility. Under the relational value conception, ALF presses the button since pressing the button is such as to fulfill the most and strongest of ALF's desires. The question of which of these two is correct is a question of metaphysics, not of intuition. Intrinsically valuable utility doesn't exist. On the other hand, there's good reason to believe that desires as propositional attitudes exist. And there's good reason to believe that states of affairs in which those propositions are true or false exist. And this gives the advantage to the relational conception of value.